you watch some Netflix, you look at a bunch of nonsense online, you push a few buttons, type things with a few keys, and first thing you know, the whole week's gotten away from you, and it's time once again for Creepy Cheapies with Dr. Lady. I'm Vasco da Gama, reminding you that 2014 was a great year to be a mask collector because so many great masks came out in 2014, including this monstrosity here, who is known to his friends and admirers as Lord of the Pit. That's right, Lord of the Pit. Now this uh, creature, uh, inspired by, but not an exact facsimile of, okay, inspired somewhat by the thing that comes out of the pit at the end of the movie Amityville 3D, which came out in the year 19... <coughs> uh, this was sculpted way back in 1990 by Jeff Death of Death Studios and it's actually been in production for a long time at uh, Death Studios. It's, it's what you call a perennial favorite I guess. But old Lord of the Pit here finally came to uh, a, a uh, wider audience, finally came to more mainstream popularity in 2014 thanks to this edition of it which was released by Trick or Treat Studios. This is one of several uh, Death Studios masks which uh, were adapted for production in 2014 by Trick or Treat Studios. Now what's the difference you ask? Well the Death Studios version is a little more expensive. It's about 20 bucks more. This one sells for about 50 bones. Uh, the Death Studios one sells for about 70. But they're very similar. Uh, the Death Studios one has a little more deluxe paint job and at least on some copies the big blank eyes which I like so much on this character at least on some of uh, the Death Studios ones, the eyes, instead of being this sort of Mountain Dew green that you see here, this, this yellow green, are more of a, a pink color, which also works really well because it looks sort of like uh, they're bloodshot, sort of red around the edges, but then pink uh, fading towards pink in the center. But other than that, they're very similar. Uh, the Trick or Treat Studios one does have a slit up the back because how else are you going to get it on your head? Come on. One thing I like about this uh, monster is that even though he was inspired by a demonic entity, he really could be just about anything. If you're having a haunted house or a Halloween party or a haunted whatever, you could kind of use Lord of the Pit here for lots of things, and he wouldn't necessarily have to be demonic. He could be an alien. He could be a, a mutant freak who lives in the woods. He could be a carnival freak kind of monster. He could be a scientific experiment gone wrong in a laboratory scene. There's a lot you could do with this mask because it has a great face with great detail and a lot of character. And it just kind of looks like a nice all-purpose monster. So Dr. Lady recommends Lord of the Pit from, uh, from the folks at Trick or Treat Studios. I also have to recommend the Death Studio version because they're essentially the same uh, character, the same sculpt and all. But uh, what a great mask, and like I said, 2014 was a great year to be collecting masks. But then, um, well, I can't remember the last time we had a year when I didn't want to collect masks. Can you? 